Yes, folks. In this video, I RGB a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. That's right. We're joining the PC Master Race with all the RGB stuff. But before we get into that, I need to remind you guys that we have two huge giveaways happening right now. We are giving away a Switch Lite and two games of choice for Switch. Uh, the Switch Lite is the grand prize. Two other winners will get the game of choice as a second place prize. To enter, all you got to do is go down to, into the description, and there will be a list of different ways for you to enter and maximize your entries. Uh, don't forget, by the way, if you join our Patreon at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime for as little as $1 a month, there are other tiers. Uh, but if you just join our Patreon, you get 15 additional entries into that giveaway. Now, we have a second giveaway as well for three copies of Super Mario 3D all stars that's right folks there is a gleam.io link down in the description for that and yes the joining our patreon also gets you additional entries uh, i will be manually entering those entries into uh gleam.io so thank you guys so much uh for all of the support and all of the amazing subs and you guys watching my videos like crazy let's get into rg bean a nintendo switch pro controller so you're probably sitting here looking at this table and you're like, what the hell is going on? Well, I had this company called Extreme Rate send me an RGB kit for a Pro Controller. I had to go out and buy a Pro Controller because I didn't even have one. Uh, and this is how far I am. You can already see some of the clear plastic buttons here. Um, all that jazz. RGB for Switch. Do you need it? No. Is it overkill? Yes. Is it going to be really cool at the end? I don't know. Let's find out. In fact, you know what? They actually sent me this Mario thing. Well, it's not really Mario, but like this red face plate um, and back plate. They sent me like this thing here. They also sent me um, this uh, GameCube colored thing. See? Atomic purple. But I think uh, I think we're gonna set these faceplates aside. Maybe we'll do a, a, a separate video on these faceplates, uh, which kind of sucks because that means I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to literally take apart the pro controller again. But that's for a different video, different problem. Set that aside. We're gonna keep putting the base pro controller back together. So you see what the RGB kit looks like with it. Faceplates, totally different video. All right, let's just keep going here. Uh, and you know, we'll speed through this as we can. Oh, by the way, it comes with some really awesome instructions and, and we have a kit. Um, this is the, uh, I fix it kit. Uh, one of the I fix it kits it is the specifically, it is the Manta precision bit set. Uh, I use this for pretty much taking apart all electronics. Uh, there are a few things that it doesn't have like a set of tweezers, although, uh, Credit to Extreme Rate. It does come with tweezers and a screwdriver. Their screwdriver is not magnetic tip, though. Hence why I'm using the iFixit kit, which is um, it's about 50 bucks for this kit. I'll put a link down, uh, Amazon link down in the description, affiliate link. Uh, and if this stuff turns out really cool, I'll put an affiliate link for that as well. Uh, so let's just let's just keep going. <laughs>
folks, tell me this is not the craziest Nintendo Switch Pro Controller modification you have ever seen. That's right, folks, we are bringing RGB to the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. All right, so here's a, this is a close-up at the controller. Now, the purple, for some reason, on the camera is flashing, uh, but it's not flashing in real life. But I want to show you guys how you set up the RGB. Uh, so when you first set it up, all the buttons will be red, uh, like these buttons under here on the shoulder buttons. So you want to hold down L and Y for about 5 or 10 seconds until the left stick here uh, begins to flash. So we'll see here. All right. It's flashing there, and then you throw right on the D-pad to change the color. So you can change the color to so blue, to green, to the purple one that looks like it's flashing, uh, to teal, and then to red. So uh, we're going to actually go ahead and set this on red here. All right. And now to move to the next button, you just hold, uh, you hit the left button and the Y button again just quickly. And now the D-pad's flashing. So I'll change that one to green. All right. We're going to get rid of these flashing uh, sticks here. We're going to make the sticks both red. Oh, yeah. And you can turn them off. Now, what's interesting uh, as I'm going through and, and changing these colors is that you cannot, uh, these lights stay on at all time. Now, there is a low power mode. Uh, that happens uh, when the battery is low on the controller where all the buttons will go blank and then you'll still be able to play for a little bit. Now you get about six to seven hours of gameplay time with the RGB on uh, and then you get uh, basically 15, 16 hours uh, if you just want to leave the controller idle with your RGB on. Um, but you can turn it off. Unfortunately, you have to go one by one button. So you go in here like you're changing the colors. Uh, and then you just literally go button by button by button uh, to turn them all off. Now um, I still have this here, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, move on to the next set of buttons here. We're gonna also make these green, so kind of go with a Christmassy kind of theme here. And then we're gonna change that flashing purple for you guys. Change that. To, uh, let's see here. Oh, it looks like I, I set these up for uh, a little little flashing mode. Um, we're going to change that as well. So now we're on the bottom ones. We're going to leave those red. Back to the stick. <laughs> D-pad. Back over to the buttons. Now they're off. The red, now they're green. And then to be done with it, you just hold uh, the L button and the Y button again for five seconds. Oh, that wasn't quite five seconds, so we'll hold it again. And there you go. So now you see we kind of got a red and green theme going on here on the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. So again, these are by Extreme Rate, and there'll be a link down in the description for those that are interested. Uh, I'm going to go back and sit down, and we're going to briefly talk about um, the uh, experience installing this bad boy. All right, so I would say uh, installing this is uh, definitely for a little bit more advanced uh, users, people that are comfortable taking apart electronics. Uh, it, it's not too difficult. Taking off this little uh, ribbon that works for the shoulder buttons is probably the most difficult because Nintendo had this like glued down when it didn't really need to be glued down because uh, the little the actual buttons that push in uh, would uh, suffice to hold it in. But for some reason, like when you install this, uh, there is, um, you know, no glue on the replacement cable for this that has the RGBs for the shoulder buttons. And then the RGBs that go under here are actually attached to the top board. So you end up replacing the top board. This is the top board right here. You end up replacing this board with a new board. Uh, and honestly, replacing the board isn't that hard. There's just like a couple ribbon cables. It even gives you an extra ribbon cable here if you mess up uh, the ribbon cable. Uh, so you can end up replacing it if you need to. I ended up not needing the extra ribbon cable. Uh, everything worked just fine. It's pretty straightforward. The I, I got to give Extreme Rate a lot of credit because their instructions here are very detailed. Uh, in color photos, uh, zooms in, zoomed in on all of the little finer details. They give you all the tools you need. Now, personally, I still uh, prefer the the whole magnetized um, stuff here from. Um, 
from iFixit. Uh, but you don't have to go out and buy this kit. It does come with everything you need to actually build it and put it together. Uh, you know, I did use their tweezers that came with quite a bit. In fact, I'm going to put all of the uh, original Switch stuff back in this box so I don't lose any of the OG stuff. In case I feel like putting it back... Um, or when I install like these faceplates they sent me later, you know, when I do a video on that, uh, you know, if I decide I want to, I want to go back, it is, it is a little more difficult to put, put the top cover back on because you got to plug a ribbon cable on while you have two additional cables attached to the top because these RGBs on these sticks come from the top board. And I just noticed now, uh, that my one button, my capture button is actually off to the side. I'm sure you guys saw that earlier. I'm going to see if I could fix that without having the, yeah, there we go. So I didn't have, end up having to take it apart to fix it. I just kind of wedged it with a screwdriver. Um, See, so yeah, I would say these extreme rate uh, modifications are really, really cool. I'm probably the only person I've seen in the whole world with an RGB officially licensed Switch Pro controller. Now, one thing you guys might be wondering is how do the buttons feel? To be honest, they feel identical identical to what Nintendo gave. Now, one thing I am interested in is these, I always had a problem with um, stick grind. So what happens is this plastic on the official ones is hard, not as hard as the outer shell plastic. And so I would get a lot of grinding and then that dust would get in there and that dust would end up um, giving me drift and all that. Uh, the plastic on these sticks is a little bit different. It's a little smoother. See, this has like a matte finish whereas this is more of a smooth finish. And I'm wondering if that smooth finish is gonna have less grinding. I'm, it's gonna take me many, many months before I'll know if that's the case. But I'm gonna be using these RGB like crazy. You see me using it in a stream or whatever, I'll advertise it down uh, down in the description as well for that. Um, these are going to run you. Now this entire RGB kit are, is going to run you between 30 to $35 on Amazon. Again, affiliate link down below. It is super, super cool. Uh, the only thing I don't I dislike about it is that, that you know, if you want to turn off the LEDs, uh, you have to go into each individual button. Uh, it would have been cool if they, after you turn off your your switch and, and have all the stuff disconnected, uh, if you if they would have been like, oh, if you hold in like say both shoulder buttons and Y, it would have been cool if they would have did something like that. This is actually a suggestion I'm going to give to you, Extreme Rate, is that you add a, a second uh, main command to just shut it all off at once. So you know R L and then Y at the same time, hold it down and have that all shut it all off for five, 10 seconds, I think that would be ideal because I went through their instructions. I wanted to make sure that there, there's not something I'm missing in here. Uh, they, you know, they have a Q and A section, uh, you know, it, it, in the Q and A's, you know, how long uh, do the lights work normally? You know, we talked about that already. Uh, they stay on for six to eight hours in game, which is pretty close to the normal battery life of the Pro Controller anyways. Uh, and standby time, you know, basically just sitting here with the lights on like this, it'll, it'll do that for 15 days. Uh, literally, if it's fully charged, 15 days of just the lights showing, uh, which I think is kind of cool. Um, why, why the DTFS uh, lights of joystick areas uh, are flashing in game? The answer would be the power wires of the joystick is touched with the metal part of the 3D joystick, which causes a short circuit. You need to take apart the controller and resort out the store. Yeah. So there's like these little power lines in there. They do suggest you put a piece of tape to hold them down, um, electrical tape. I didn't do that. Uh, I'm not having any issues. Uh, it's an optional thing. It doesn't. This is not included. But uh, if if you do end up getting a short problem, that actually fixes it. Uh, why the controller buttons work fine, but the LEDs don't glow. Um, the DTFS cable enter a power saving mode automatically when the power is low. The controller will give priority to supplying power to the buttons. So again, if you're playing and, you, and your lights go out, that's a sign you need to charge your controller soon. But you can keep playing. So that's kind of the cool thing. Um, so yeah, again, there's no 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 official way that I could tell. Um, to shut it off other than going in there, holding down the L and the Y button uh, five seconds and going button by button by button and shutting off each individual light. But again, it gets 15 days. So, uh, I mean, it's a lot of battery life on a Pro Controller. So, yeah, you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Do you think this is really, really cool? You saw it up close where it looks way better than it does back here. Um, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I would say that this is probably one of the most successful, coolest products ever. And, folks, can you freaking believe it? I RGB'd a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Welcome to 2020.